the real AAA experience. Here it is. The Binti of Carbonara. Oh, right, the war room. Isn't this where I was supposed to go? I did it. I remembered. Sir, may I have a word? What is it, Diddy? Well, <clears throat> uh, what was I supposed to do? I forgot what I was going to ask. Vinny, you did the war room last stream. Oh. You saved standing outside the room you were meant to go in so you wouldn't forget. Vinny, I think it moved you. So, was it the labs? Hello again, Destiny's Ward. It can make you an alchemy recipe for five miles plus the cost of ingredients. <clears throat> Dragon scale. <laughs> the magic words are monosodium glutamate. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but that recipe doesn't create anything. Better luck next time. Welcome back, Master Diddy. I've been appraised of your missions. We've made something for you. Cool, what is it? It is... It's a elixir. It, oh... It's a elixir that wards off thirst, an elixir that will let you cross the entire desert while remaining hydrated. This auspicious elixir is made from exotic materials from around the world. Extracts from the citrine fruit of Persia, essence of the cane of India, and embers from the great forests of the north. It is known as Level 3. Electrolyte Sports Drink. Electrolyte Sports Drink? That's a peculiar name. One bottle of level 3 electrolyte sports... And you'll be able to cross completely from one side of the desert to the other. But be careful. The effect is temporary. Great. Let's have some. You'll probably want to get at least four bottles. You want to be sure that you have a bottle to get back and a few on hand for emergencies. Oh. Wait a second. Why are you making me pay for this? Well, it's just not done that way. You're a... Yeah, yeah, I'm a commissioned officer, I heard. It doesn't make any sense. Do you guys even want me to rescue the princess? Of course, that's why I'm helping you. So give me the elixir for free if you want to help me. We can't do that. Why? Well, because we, we just can't. I mean, it just seems... Diddy, I need you to let this go. As a sidekick fairy, my role is to advise you, but to let you make your own decisions. But this is getting embarrassing. Let me guess, this is the first thing you learned in side sidekick school. Well, yeah. The first words we heard in orientation were literally, The hero never gets anything for free. Well, it's stupid. I need to go sell water. I have a secret recipe the dev DM'd me if you want it, says a chat member. I don't know if I trust that statement. I kind of remember what I have, have to do.
DNA replicator <clears throat> maps. Don't want your apps. Did I ever talk about the mid-season finale of Better Call Saul? Uh... I did, in so much as I said it was amazing. But I didn't go into spoilers. I'm gonna do a Saul retrospective... ...when the show is finished. I'm just gonna, like, talk about it for like an hour. Because it's that good. So, this is actually how you make money in this game, is you just click, you buy a bunch of water. Five eyes of newt, four dragon scales, one maw of shark, three galls of goat, seven wolf tooth, and two roots of hemlock. Can use the mouse wheel to make it faster. God damn it, chat member, thank you. You beat Tish. First plot key costs 45,000. Cannot sell that. Monolith? From 2001 A Space Odyssey. Do I need to have? I mean, it's nice to have it, but. Just gonna sell it. We'll, we'll get there. Do you like his rival, Saul Bad Guy? <laughs> yeah, Saul Bad Guy is great. You can also give furniture. Oh, right, the furniture. So I did a uh, grab bag. And it was like two hours long and there's some... some trash in there, but there's a game... called Orbital Something... or something... that I really ended up liking. I think you'll find some interesting- oh, FUCK! Orbital Bullet. Yes, not Orbital Massage. Orbital Bullet. Please, God. Please, God, no. End- end this. Oh. It got ended. Where is the furniture place? Did you watch Slippin' Jimmy's animated show? That is a weird thing. There is... actually... no, I didn't watch it, but... Um, apparently it's terrible. But yeah, there's an animated show of a young Saul, aka Jimmy. Jimmy McGill. And, uh, <laughs> it looked so... Oh, this is how you do the speed boots without flying. It looks very, very contrary to what the show is. But hey, I don't know. Maybe people... Maybe someone likes it.
I saw the scene where a nun farts out a demon. Okay. That's, that's enough of that show. Ah, oh, what's this? You're a mirror, aren't you? Little mirror, little mirror. Someone might stare at you and become trapped in the mirror world for all eternity. Thank you. I'm eternally happy now. It's just, yeah, it's Agatha from Twilight Princess. Oh my god, that's creepy. Yes, the Slip and Jimmy show. What did Vince mean by this? Peter Gould who? Vince Gilligan fart Breaking Bad, Saul and every potential spin-off that every actor will ever ever be in all in one swift Taco Bell fart in a stroke of genius it was the big bang of entertainment we call it One word of advice, this is the only place in the whole kingdom where you can buy level 3 electrolyte sports drink. If you find yourself in the desert without any level 3 electrolyte sports drink to get you back, you could be stranded, so plan accordingly. Vinny, I do not comprehend what you just fucking said. So, a lot of people don't comprehend things I say, but... Did you get mad about it, bro? Any plans on continuing Skyrim? Not really. I think, I don't know, I kind of feel like I've done a lot. The problem is, though, since I moved to my new computer, I don't know if those files are going to work the same way. The only thing I could have done really, oh fuck, would have been to set Dawn Guard free. Which is, I could have defeated that vampire layer and then had Dongard like, live. It's not what I wanted to do. How do I equip this? Do I have to go into the menu to use it every time? Oh, because I'm super hydrated. Fuck. No, 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 no. Jesus! Okay, no more speed boots. No more speed boots. Hi, welcome to Spinner Moat Coffee. Can I have your name? It's Diddy. What will you be having today, Mr. Lars?
I enjoy that every time. Every single time I've laughed at it. The new Barry episode had that... What's his name? There's a character who's just very wise, who works at a bakery. Who's like one of those people. Keith? Was that his name? Mitch? Wow, we're getting a lot of different names. I'm pretty sure that sword is con is not contraband. They sell the exact same sword right across the river from the royal palace in a shop owned by the king. Yeah, well, I'd like to see the king's swords chop a goblin in half in one stroke. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that sword can't do that. That's also the same exact price they sell it for at the capital. Well, we've got a lot of weapons here if the sword doesn't suit your tastes. Yeah, I bet. And here are your weapons. Don't get caught with this shit, man. If the feds find out this whole operation is going down, I don't think you have to worry. Finally got a sword. Cool library. <laughs> Hundred and one unthwartable money making ideas. Polypiling. So if you have a polymorph wand, you can change your artifacts into different ones and then sell them. Free water is always fun to sell. There was a recipe. Diddy goes on to found Nestle later. Thank you for that chat. It's good for 10 crossbow darts, one eye of newt, three roots of hemlock, two teeth of wolf, and two scales of dragon. They made Diablo Immortal Battle Pass character specific, not account wide. Like everything is character specific. Like a lot of things. And you can't take your characters to other servers. So if your friends are playing on a different server than you, you won't be able to bring your characters there. <laughs> Steel bikini? Okay, I'll take that. I okay, can't wear it. Hey, you hungry? You need to have some real food. Street food. Okay, what do you have? Gyro, plain yogurt, fortune cookie, and of course chicken. Uh, nothing for now. What? You gotta eat something. What are you gonna do? Eat some fancy escargot like Amir? Like the Amir? It's some real food, man. Acknowledge the funny number. You don't pay my... Alright, nice. Nice! <laughs> Ooh. 
approaches. Come around to the front. No one can have an audience with the Emir today unless you have official business with him, do you? Yes, I do. I bear a letter from His Majesty for the Emir. Uh, you must be the chosen one. We had advanced notice of your coming. Please come in. Thank you for waiting, Lance. Enjoying your orange sherbet? It's pretty tasty, actually. Sherbet. Very good. Now to business. We have quite a complicated situation here. No kidding. It's more complicated than you're even aware of. In the letter you gave me, the king asked me to grant you access to the southern catacombs. I would gladly do so if I could, but I can't. Not right now. Why not? It's a long story, and I will spare you the details. To keep things short, it was my agents who discovered the hiding place of the plot key. I gladly shared this information with the king. He is my liege lord, after all. But I thought also to help end this crisis by retrieving the plot key myself. Really? Not myself personally, of course. I hired the famed British archaeologist and explorer, Cora Loft. <laughs> I've heard of her. Didn't she kill a salamander in Bavaria? That's Whoa. correct. And if she had been as successful in retrieving the plot key, I would right now be handing it to you and sending you off to complete your glorious quest. But... Alas, she entered the catacombs two days ago and has not emerged. That's not good. So, now the king wants me to send you into the catacombs. Given that you are the chosen one, I hope you will have better luck than Cora. But there still remains a problem. I gave Cora a magical badge that opens the doors to the catacombs. It was the only such badge I have. Oh, I see where this is going. Let me guess. I'm going to have to trek halfway across the kingdom to fetch some kind of magical medallion that'll... Let you create a new badge, right? No. No, that's not it at all. And people want You're voice going to acting have to in Zelda. Two magical medallions. Great. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you won't have to conquer any dungeons per se. These will be more like mini quests. All right, all right. Where are these medallions? Well, first of all, the magical medallions have a name. They are called subplot keys. For one fuck's sake. The key is in the possession of one Jeremiah Nelson of McGregor's Ranch. No kidding. That's near where I live. Why the hell does old man Nelson have a subplot key? For security purposes, we entrusted the subplot keys to people one wouldn't expect to have one. Security through obscurity, that's what I say. Yeah, you might want to reconsider that approach. What about the other subplot key? The other one is kept in the house of Lady Samuel Tish Stone, a minor noblewoman who lives near the border of Chingame and Tausiary in the northwest of this kingdom. I see. Your maps app should show the locations. Once you've acquired the subplot keys, come back to me and we'll use them to create a new badge that will let you access the catacombs. Good luck, Lance. May you live long. May you live long. I'm gonna forget that. So one is in Chingame, and where was the other one? In Chonjurip? Or I could just check the map. I don't think I purchased the map app. Oh, well. Still another monolith. Yeah, all this junk. I take possession of your crap. Here's your payment. Remember, if you sold me anything important on your quest, you can redeem it later. Ray Leno has mad chin game. Ronald Augengay? <laughs> That's a good name. Look at his face, too. It's just, like, super realistic. Owen? Wait. It looks like Elijah... Eli <laughs> Elijah Wood. Not really. My name is Ronald Owengay, and I'm the only licensed water vendor in the city. If you want to buy water, it's 20 miles per glass. 20 miles for water? I can get water for free back home. 
course you can, but this isn't your home. It's smack in the middle of the desert. Water is not exactly a commodity here. Supply and demand, you know? I'm afraid if you want water, you have to pay 20 miles per glass. I don't think so. I don't have to pay your exorbitant price for water. The oasis is right here. I could just scoop some up and take it. Oh, okay, go ahead. I love the way conversations end in this game. The fuck is this? Well met, traveler. I can tell that you have come from far away on a long journey and are weary from your travels. Well, sort of. This is the Desert Inn. We cater to all the hurts one may endure on their journeys, and there are many hurts, many ways of dealing with those hurts. All of which we can do here at the Desert Inn. Perhaps you'd like an orc massage? For another, I would recommend a hearty meal from our tavern, or a relaxing bath in our heated oasis. But for one such as you, I would recommend a room where you could take a nap. A room? Now that you mention it, I suppose it might be nice to have a room here to regroup in. How much for a room? Standard size room is 600 flyer miles. Oof, that's a little pricey. Does the mind really exist as an entity? Or is the mind simply an artificial objectification we apply to the chemical processes in our brains? Well, as someone who works at the Desert Inn, I like to think I have some knowledge of this just by osmosis. Our comforts are designed to restore the balance of chemicals within the brain to help travelers achieve what it is they are seeking, be it serenity, energy, or mirth. When the balance of chemicals change, the mood and behavior of the person changes in, in accord. This would seem to support the mind being a chemical process, but is, the, is this the answer or does it merely shift the question? Postulating the mind as an entity manifestly implies a bound relationship between mind and body. An interface, if you will. The mind must be able to receive the senses and direct the actions of the body. But who is to say if these chemicals are not simply another kind of sense? Another node of the mind-body interface, just one less evident than the senses we are familiar with. Who is to say where the body ends and the mind begins? It is a difficult, some say impossible, question to answer. That was very interesting. Or you've shifted the balance of chemicals in my brain. Either way. Pay and go to the roof for the best boot. Someone said you sold a plot key. I did not. I sold a card key, which was junk. Apparently the Desert Inn offers a discount for Heroes of the Realm. I can charge you... I can offer you a large suite for a hundred frequent flyer miles. Or, or a Chicken Cosmo, of course. Well, this is a surprise. Who the hell ever heard of a game offering the hero a discount? Here's your key, Diddy. Your room number is 201, second floor. The stairway is in the lobby. Thank you for your patronage and for being Hero of the Realm. Great! I'll grab my stuff! Chat member said best boot is available, but I don't know where the boot is. You have taken the Rowena bed. <laughs> what the fuck? The Orientagon? Hello, Diddy. Are you Princess Carmiana? I am. Where are we? We're in your dream, Diddy. My dream? I I've never dreamt of any place like this before. 
are you like astrally projecting yourself into my dream so you can talk to me? Yeah, something like that. Well, don't worry, your highness. I'm doing my best to try to rescue you. That's really very sweet of you. Where are you? How oh, did he? I can't do that. One of the limitations of astral projection is that I can't reveal any information to you that you don't already know. I can only rearrange your own thoughts and memories. This is because the existence of astral projection must remain unprovable. What is this room? I've never dreamt anything like this. This is the Orientagon. Um, this is a primal part of the substratum of our universe. Just about everything we know, everything we see, and even the space we occupy was all put in place and made coherent by reference to the Orientagon. Will you marry me, Car Carmiana? Oh, Diddy, I'm not going to marry you unless you rescue me. One thing at a time, you know. What really is consciousness? That is a very strange question to ask in a dream, Diddy. Are you even conscious now? You're dreaming, yet you're self-aware. Yet you have some control over your actions. For many people, this is the definition of consciousness. But almost no one would say that you are fully conscious when dreaming. What else do we need for consciousness? For one thing, although you are self-aware in a dream, you are not meta-aware in a dream. You cannot think about the act of thinking. Remember the act of remembering or observe the act of observing. Hmm, very interesting. I'm going to have to disagree with you, princess. I don't think that you need meta-awareness for consciousness. I don't agree that we lack meta-awareness in dreams. While the greatest minds have tried to define consciousness, I can speculate, but I can't give you the answer. But I can tell you that you are so wrong about meta-awareness. Just FYI. You just are. I think I'm about to wake up. Goodbye for now. I hope to rescue you soon. Goodbye, Diddy. Why were the speed boots equipped? in my dream. That's meta-awareness. Oh, you need the key to open the door to the roof. 100 miles. I got my miles back. I got extra health. Not so speedy boots. Press R for run to quickly put them on or take them off. Well, this is better. Can you remind me of the locations of the two subplot keys again? One is in possession of it's in uh, Nelson McGregor's house. Okay, M McGregor's ranch. The other is found in the home of Lady Sameltish Stone. I need to buy the maps app. Oh, for fuck's sake. No. Almost. Oh, this is much better. Vinny, are you ever going to play our Metroid mod or not? Damn, dude. It's cold. Nah, I'd, I'd rather play real games like Diddy of Carmiana. So, okay, here's my reasoning, and this was actually in a video that has not come out yet, so bear with me a second, chat member, developer. While I am extremely interested in your mod, I wanted to wait and see if we got a Nintendo Direct this month first. Just in case I started your Metroid mod, and then... Like, with the fucking cosmic coincidence timing that I am used to. Nintendo goes and says, Hey, Metroid Prime Trilogy is now launching on Nintendo Switch today. So, I hope that helps.
Yes, which is why you should make it happen. I mean, do we have a confirmation on how many times I, I accidentally played a game and then the thing got announced? Let's be real, Vinny. That's never going to happen. It's bizarre. Why does Nintendo not like money? They love money. Ah, uh, yes, Aunt Gertrude. Oh my god. H J K <laughs> So there's no reason why there's a DDR clone in this, right? All right. Why not? It's not DDR, it's DNA. This game has reasons for things. Yeah, good point. Um, so I have to go here, right? icon on the map yeah so there's uh yeah does it show me where i am so it's like north it um so there's one here and one here you are the green triangle i actually did not see the green triangle oh yeah there i really didn't see it Has anyone mentioned that the map looks like a giant ass yet? Um... A little bit? Well, I accept. A little bit. Don't I have a nice garden? What? My garden, it's my favorite hobby. Look at all the fantastic plants and flowers and vegetables growing all around us. Oh, yeah, it's real impressive. Uh. Uh, have you brought me a fairy? How sweet. My garden is so beautiful and colorful, but I've never had a garden fairy. Cool, cool garden uh... you got there. I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm not a garden fairy. I'm a sidekick fairy. Also, garden fairies aren't actually fairies. They're just insects called fireflies. Oh, that's too bad. You know, you kind of look familiar. I get that a lot. I am a Lady Samiltish Stone, Countess of Vesta, and naturally you are wondering why a high-ranking noblewoman like me lives in a humble cottage out in the country. Not really. Uh, literally the wonder. same model well, as uh, isn't that humble. Diddy's it's mother. Nice, actually. Young man, this cottage may look One second, be right back. but I'll have you know it's infested with the Rons. Wait, did you say Rons? They don't really exist. That's just a human tale. Well, I can assure you they do exist. I've seen them myself. I don't mind, though. Better to live a humble life with the Rons out in the country, I say, than a hectic life in the city. You should move to Boringshire. I bet you'd love it. Good heavens. Boringshire. 
No thanks, I'm just a recluse, I don't hate myself. Well, my name is Lance, and I'm from Borington, and I don't blame you, couldn't wait to get out. Now I'm on a quest to rescue the princess. Rescue the princess? Did something happen to Kamiana? Wow, you really are isolated out here. Yes, she is being held captive by Firina Hirde, and the king has commissioned me to go on a quest to save her. I am the chosen one, Destiny's Ward, the glorious hero, and so on. What did I miss? I'm afraid I completely believe you. It'd be just like Telki to pull a stunt like this. Telki? Well, it was nice to meet you, Lance, and I wish you good luck on your quest. You'll need it. Princess Bride reference? Something about rats? I was sent here from Amir of Naroka to collect a medallion known as the Subplot Key. Oh my god. You're a glorious hero. Of course you need the Subplot Key. This is not good. Why is this not good? Because, well, I don't have it. The Rons have it. Oh, please, Lance, let's just Rons? ransack the cottage. This nutcase with an invisible garden obviously just put it somewhere and forgot about it. Now cool it, Tap. Let's just find out what she has to say before we do something drastic. Fine. Lady Samilton. Rodents of normal please size, I see. Lady Ilt. What? I go by the middle three letters of my name with my friends. Very well, Lady Ilt. If the Rons have the subplot key, how can we get it back? Well, you'll have to sneak past them, of course. There's no other way. Come around to the other side of the house. I want to show you something. Here we stand at the entrance to the Ron secret lair. They have taken the subplot key into their lair and are guarding it. I don't think they know what I know about it. Ah, oh, brother. What secret entrance? I don't see one here. Look carefully. Wait, I see it. Look at that. There's a tiny little hole in the wall. Wow, that's small. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit through there. I know. Even if you could, you would have to sneak past the Rons. What are we going to do? We need somebody really small to be able to infiltrate the lair. Hmm. 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 Look, she's flying away. Wait, I've got it. Tabitha, you can go into the lair and get it. <laughs> Tabitha? Where'd you go? Come on, I need to talk. I'm here. Tab, you can fit into the entrance of the Ron's lair and get the subplot key. But Lance, I can't do that. I'm just a sidekick fairy. You're the glorious hero. But Tab, you're the only one that can fit into the entrance. I need you. No, I can't. Besides, I... I can't face the Ron's. They're too powerful. Well, yes, as Lady Ilt told us, you have to sneak past them. This is a stealth mission. You don't understand, Lance. Uh, this there is a stealth mission. There is nothing more horrifying to a fairy than the Ron's. I was told that if I was bad, my parents would feed me to the Rons. I, I don't ever sleep because I'm a fairy, you know? But if I did, I would have been up all night for years worrying that the Rons were coming for me. You know, Tab, for a being with no soul, you have an awful lot of existential anxiety. That's easy for you to say. Listen to me, Tabitha. I may be a country boy with no experience heroing, but there's something I do know. A sidekick sometimes has to step up when the hero is unable to. I bet that's like the first thing you learned at sidekick school. That's not... Ugh, actually, that really was the first thing I learned in sidekick school. Well, <laughs> Tabitha, the time for you to step up is now. I can't get to the subplot key, but you can. Very well. But this is not what I signed up for. Well, I'm glad you two kids have worked it out. Let's go back to the garden. But if somehow you can get... Get rid of the Rons altogether. I'll also give you a special <laughs> gift in addition to the subplot key. Gee, thank you, Lady. Even Bill. better speed boost. I must say, you have a wonderful garden. Oh. All right, Tabitha, off you go. Just get in there, get the subplot key, and get out. I'll be right here by the hole if you need me. I'm counting on you. Fine. Let's just get it over with. Okay. All right, Tabitha. Off you go. Just get in there, get the subplot key, and get out. I'll be right here. <laughs> huh. I'm having deja vu. I know. What? It's nothing. Oh, let me guess. It's like something you learned in sidekick school. Like, you get deja vu whenever a fairy 
continues or something. Yes. What? That's it. You guess it. It happens so quickly. More. That you get deja vu <coughs> when fairy continues. Fairies don't have souls, so we don't go to limbo to await continuation like humans do. Instead, when we continue, the universe rolls back to a point sometime before we <clears> die, <throat> and we continue from there. However, the universe rolls back only imperfectly, and that manifests itself in your memory as deja vu. Wait, you're telling me that you already went into the Ron's lair, got killed, and now can't believe they're explaining the respawn anything, mechanic. Still remember it? Yes. And it's good too. You are so full of it, Tabitha. Anyways, as I was saying, I'll be right here by the hole if you need me. I'm counting on you. Damn, there it is again. Ah, <sighs> please, universe, please don't roll back so far next time. What the fuck am I supposed to do here? I, I guess I could toggle full screen. I can listen. So I says, you can take this job and shove it, you humans. And I walked out and I went to get a new job. I found out that those sons of bitches blacklisted me from the goal to good gigs. Can you believe that? Well, Ralph, you know, I don't agree with blacklisting, but you got to admit they had a point about the baby. Sam, let me tell you something. This isn't about infecting a baby with rabies. This is about human holding honest, hardworking rats down. That's all this is about, Sam. These people only want one thing, to make us suffer. The faster you learn, not you're nothing but a victim to these sadistic assholes. The faster you learn to survive in this business. But Ralph, ever since I was a little rattling, I dreamed of being part of the video game industry, and here I am. I don't see what's so bad about being an enemy. What? Why, low wages, no glory, and you keep getting killed? All enemy gigs are crap. I'm so happy to be here anyway, Ralph. Uh... It's making up words that don't exist in the sentence. Look, I'm not saying all enemy gigs are crap. All I'm saying is we should both have a better gig than a sentry on a stealth mission. Come on, Sam. What other gig can you get in a video game where you're severely nearsighted and have almost no peripheral vision? <sighs> See, that's what I'm saying. What does eyesight have to do with being a sentry? Nothing. Just an excuse for the human to keep it down. You know what? Shut up, Ralph. I grew up in the sewers. Now I have steady work in the industry and a job I've always wanted. So, so what if it's not the most glamorous job? I can't complain. Oh, you say that now, but the faster you... Yeah, yeah, the faster I learn, the faster something happens. Ah, whatever. I gotta get back on patrol. <gasps> Goodbye, Ralph. Got a little agita. Poor kid. Doesn't know hard work and a job well done will never get him anywhere. Fuck. Whoa. Vinny, the radar is smaller if you are lower altitude. Very good callback, chat member. What? No.
the giant rat makes all of the rules. <gasps> Sure is rat stealth. Use the jar, Vin. Everyone, everyone thinks they're so clever with this jar shit. Oh God. Jar memes. Not like I don't feed into it. <laughs> Jarma nine eight five. <laughs> The excitement. Well, it's not great. <laughs> I could be playing Metroid. A rat found me. I was worried it was gonna... Oh, it's Indiana Jones parody. What's happening? Oh, look! A flu opened above me. I must be in the hearth under the chimney. I, I can just fly out of here now. Cool! Because it's kind of hard to find creative ways to do that where I'm from, you know? I get it. You'd be surprised how hard it is to get a magazine delivered here. Hey, chosen one. What the hell? You said you were going to wait by the Ron's lair. What? You know, given that I had to step in and be a hero, the absolute least you could do is have been marginally passable sidekick and stay by the hole like you said you would. CJ's. Uh, well... I don't think I even want to give you the subplot key anymore. Maybe I'll just give it to some other hero. Maybe I'll give this subplot key to Gary. Not Gary. Why not? Well, first of all, Gary wouldn't have waited for you at all. No, he... Okay, I can't argue with you on that. But still, why would you abandon your post? It was just... boring. What? I didn't know how long you'd be. And I was just around the other side of the house. I didn't know you'd be so upset. Well, I am. It doesn't really matter how close you were. You said you'd be right outside the hole. I'm sorry, Tab. I really didn't think you'd care that much whether I was nearby. Look, when we met, you agreed to tag along with me for a while. And, well, I think you've done that. You've fulfilled your side of the bargain. So I release you from my service, Tab. If you want to leave me, seek a true hero. I won't object. Shit. Well, uh, it would be a waste of time to stop now. After all of this... Fine. In spite of this, I'll still tag along with you, but only because heretofore you have demonstrated an aptitude for heroing. But be advised, I am not happy. <laughs> Here's the subplot key. And let me tell you something. If you pull that shit next time I have to step up and be a hero, I am gone. And we'll see how you like it when Gary rescues the princess. Okay, sorry. I appreciate your forgiveness. Can we just go on? <laughs> I don't think the mic is peaking that much for a 
Isn't the glorious hero come to admire my beautiful garden again since I, you don't have a garden fairy to give me? I assume you want to talk? Why are you a recluse, really? Would you like to know the truth? I used to be Lady High Consul to the Queen, a position currently held by that ineffective kiss-ass James Stackumphy. Talkar clearly didn't want a personal advisor or even someone to manage the more mundane affairs of the kingdom, which I had done for Talkar's mother, Palchon. That man just cannot delegate certain things. So I resigned and came to live here as far from Botudgel City as possible. Well, that and my pretty garden. Actually, I'd have to say it's mostly my garden. Do you really see plants growing in your garden? What, you can't? Can life truly have any meaning if this is all there is? Of course. Take a look at me. No one would ever say I had a lot going on in my life, living here in the middle of the woods all alone, especially given that I was once in the High Council. But my life has plenty of meaning. Look at my beautiful garden. <clears throat> yeah, I understand your point, but I confess I'm not quite convinced. Look, everyone has their thing. You are the glorious hero, the chosen one, Destiny's Ward. So the, your thing is to rescue the princess. Once upon a time, I was High Council. That was my thing. But then I resigned, and now my thing is to tend to this beautiful garden. You might look at this garden and see just a bunch of overgrown plants, but it's beautiful and meaningful to me. Someday you'll have rescued the princess, and you'll need a new thing. The important thing, Diddy, is the thing that gives you meaning. Life meaning is a thing, and that's what the thing is. Have a thing. Humble. Garden humble. Wait a second. I won't need to find a thing once I rescue the princess. The king promised her to me, so I'll be prince consort. Someday king consort. I'll have a duty to this kingdom, and that will be my thing. I have to say, it's probably a little more important than tending a garden with nothing growing in it. Oh? Well, let me tell you something, child. I was High Consul for almost 20 years. I am very familiar with the nuance of managing a kingdom and the games the nobility play. I was there. Here's a little known fact. Marriage promises very often don't work out. I can tell you right now, you will not be given to Carmiana, and not even because Telkar would break his promise or Carmiana would oppose. He won't and she wouldn't, but you still won't marry her. Why? Well, let's just call it a gut feeling. From someone who understands the system. Stuff happens. It's not because you are a commoner from Boring, sure. If that's what you are thinking. On the contrary, in fact, the Vine Cuns are well known for going outside the usual spousal fodder so as to avoid any taint of Kenoran blood. But it won't be you. Well, Lady Ilt, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you and respectfully suggest that your gut feeling might be a little off. Very well, I have advised you, and it is up to you how you receive it. By the way, did you say there was nothing growing in my garden? Oh, no, yes, I mean, but I didn't mean it like it's just an exaggeration to, to make a point or something. Zoom. Random bouts of philosophy. In my shitpost game. Tabitha is in no mood to let you operate her touchscreen. Whoa, 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 well, what the fuck? How am I supposed to use the map? I'm assuming it's one of these. It's close to boring, sure, behind a wall. We are there, and this this be a wall. Rip an idea I had for the cemetery, but never implemented. Okay. Why can I do this?
<laughs> football. They're free, you can just take them. The problem with free ducks... See, this has been going around. People have been, like, dropping some life hacks about free ducks at the park. Yes, the ducks are free. The problem is actually the skill issue in regards to getting the ducks home. Hey there, old man Nelson. Nice song you're playing there. So you like the music of old man Nelson, do you, son? Maybe you'd like to buy a vinyl album then. Real cheap, just 500 miles. Maybe some other time. Aren't you one of them young lads from Borrington? What do you want to know from old man Nelson? I was sent here from the Emir of Naroka to collect a medallion known as the subplot key. What? I'm not going to dig up the subplot key for that old fool. I'm too busy. I have a whole bunch of shepherding to do today. Oh, come on, it'll take you maybe one minute. Forget it, lad. It's shearing day, and I have a whole I pasture of sheep I need to round up. I can't waste another moment. You're just sitting there playing the jaw harp. I'm meditating. You have to be in the right frame of mind when herding sheep, or you'll never make it. Oh, for God's sake. I'll just go herd the sheep up for you. I need that subplot key. You? Well, isn't that just a peach's fuzz? Look at the farmer boy who thinks he can do a real man's job like ranching. <laughs> I threshed enough corn this morning to make your fingers bleed, old man. I think I can handle a few lambs. Oh, I'd like to see that. Tell you what, laddie, I'll give you a chance. If you round up all those sheep, I'll give you a subplot key and a valuable treasure besides. A valuable you treasure besides. Now this here is the shearing pit. What you have to do is go out into the pasture and bring back all ten sheep and throw them in the pit. No problem. But you have to hurry. The sheep don't like to be corralled for very long. They'll get restless and climb out. Oh, of course they do. It wouldn't be a proper minigame if it didn't have some challenge. Yeah, you'll find out soon enough, laddie. Well, it seems easy enough. Let's do it. I like how this game is just Twilight Princess. One sheep. You know, Tab, this is even easier than I thought. The sheep don't even run away from you. Two sheep. Goat in. Shine get. He's counting sheep. Oh, I get it. What was that cool roll that was done there? Ah, uh, fuck, I'm back here again. <laughs> Hello, Diddy. Hello, Your Highness. I must be sleeping again. Okay, about to wake up. Get up, laddie! Wh what happened? You fell asleep on the job, just as I suspected. A farmer like you can't handle a rancher's you. job. I don't know why I fell asleep. You fell asleep because you were counting sheep, boy. Don't you know anything? Oh, that's why... And while you were asleep, all the sheep climbed out of the pit. You're gonna have to start all over, lad. If you want your subplot key. Me? I'm gonna go back to meditating. Show you how a real rancher does it. I'm gonna go back to meditating. 
Tower, how am I going to get all these sheep in the pit if I keep falling asleep when I count them? Ranching is harder than I thought. I think we're going to have to find an item that'll keep you awake, Diddy. Maybe I could try meditating. I don't think you have time, Diddy. Yeah, I don't have a jaw harp either. Borington is nearby. Maybe we can find an item there to keep you awake. Oh, there's nothing in Borington that's ever kept me awake. But there's a first time for everything, I guess. I guess. I had a jaw harp. I don't know where it is. But yeah, I would have imagined coffee would just be... Cool gravestone. Just collect coffee. fucking face. Hey, now, they look very familiar. Dad, can I borrow your pitchfork? My pitchfork? Why? Well, I've been recruited to go on a quest to rescue the princess, but I need a weapon. Now, do you know I can't give you my pitchfork? Can I stand out here in front of my cottage looking cool without my pitchfork? It just wouldn't be right. Early game dialogue. Reopening in three days. I wonder how many newer viewers who have not seen part one of this or the old video got to see that just now for the first time and are fucking confused. Stoop. Mr. Lars, um, I guess an espresso. This will give you cardiac arrest unless you're in good health. There is that much caffeine in it. My management requires me to advise anyone who orders espresso that it is enough espresso to fill a large coffee cup and you should not drink it if you have any health problems. We're having heart palpitations. Probably f Oh, oh. Oh yeah, no, we actually are taking damage. The heart palpitations have stopped.
Is this the first time you've actually taken damage? No, there was combat. In combat, I took damage. And Worf, where did you get that scar? What battle? When? The subtitles should just say Worf scowls at Riker. And then, like, in parentheses, within parentheses, within parentheses, it would say, this is nothing new. What sector? What day? What color barrel was it? How old were you? What day of the week was it? Ten sheep, I did it. God. Oh God. Need something, son? Oh no! Oh no, fuck. Oh, he's tired again now. Oh, that was lame. That was so lame. Oh, I'm yawning again. No, no yawn. Only coffee. Two sheep? What do you mean, two sheep? I, there's, there's more than two in there. What the fuck? What? Pick them up and put them down again, maybe? Once they're in here, you cannot do that. That's all of them. Oh, man. Like the fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Skill issue. Somehow, palpitations have returned. That is literally the only good that has come from this.
pick the boots off before jumping, please. I'm just gonna do careful. It's fine. Very careful. I'm, I'm like kind of falling asleep in real life while doing this. No, Vinny, I was not defending Frontiers. The build... The, the fact that it was recent has me worried. Oh, okay. Well, that's a callback from like an hour ago that I didn't expect, but... The thing about it is, you know how the Sonic fan base and you know what very many fan bases can be when people are passionate about something i could just as easily see someone saying no but Vinny, you don't understand that build was from may 28th it is now june 3rd and therefore the game is much better i mean that's definitely something that's happened it's come up in the past where i would say a game looked kind of embarrassing and not great and then some chat member would show up and be like no boot old build and then the game comes out and it's not that much better it happens don't worry getting shitty sonic games is nothing new for us says chat member <laughs> sorry chat member and sonic fans Need something, hey, old son? Hey, man Nelson, I've got all the sheep in the pit. That's impossible. Let me see. Huh. Well, I'll be. All ten sheep are in the shearing pit. I've never got more than seven in there, even with my meditating. How did you do that? Well, all I can say is a little outside-the-box thinking does wonders. Well, let me tell you, son. You're gonna have the best shearing we've ever had in a long time, thanks to you. My God, ten whole sheep. Well, a promise is a promise. Here is the subplot key. And also, here is that treasure I spoke of. <laughs> oh, cool. It's a magic spleen. I love those. <laughs> oh, that was tasty. Well, if you think that's good, you should try Agus. Excellent. No, the wood textures, they don't add up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I got the two subplot keys. And... Uh, I guess back to the castle. One small cross. Wow, there was a crossbow in there the whole time. Might want a Gatorade refill. I guess we need some water and water, 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 water and water, water, water. At least a little bit. Good enough. You have bought 172 glasses of water.
And I'll even, I'll find it one day. You should turn in your Rowena furniture. Could do that. I don't really need to. I probably will be able to make it to the, you know, through the desert. I don't, I don't know how many more miles I'm going to need throughout the remainder of this very bizarre game. You can sell your apps, you can sell quest items. If you sell the plot key and you get like 15,000 for it or whatever it is, how do you buy it back if your wallet can't hold that much? Hey Achilles, yes, my young, what? I have a solution to your problem, hear me out. Okay, you claim you have an infinite number of lengths to run, but let's consider the amount of time it takes to run that distance. I'm listening. Let's begin with your example. Where you are starting 10 meters behind the tortoise. Following so far, the tortoise is running at half a meter per second. But you're running at 5 meters. Have I read this already? Are you with me? I don't think so. The tortoise moved forward a whole meter. You still have a meter run before you catch the tortoise. I'm, I can't do that. It's too late. I can't read this. It's not going to make sense to me anyway. <laughs> oh, fuck. We can see that for every interval you have to run, the amount of time it takes for you to run that interval is one-tenth the time it took you to run the previous interval. We can easily see that the amount of time it takes you to run... The nth interval is 2x10 to the first power n seconds. <laughs> Fuck off, game. <laughs> Even though there are an infinite number of intervals you have to run before you can overtake the tortoise, you can cover those intervals in a finite amount of time. Which means you can, in fact, overtake the tortoise. Oh my god, I can take- I can overtake the tortoise. Wow, it's clear as day. Why didn't I see it? I cannot thank you enough. With luck, I will make my appointment on time. Here, take this item as a token of my gratitude. I am now off. Enemy pacifier? But what about the tortoise, though? Got some truly... Astounding walking animations with four hind legs. Stay with me. Enemy pacifier. I, you know, I forgot to buy more of them. That was my last one. I went back, I got the money, I forgot to buy the rest. Help. Help. I can't swim. Help. Why did you jump in the water then? The Diddy of Carmiana crash report. Something must have gone really wrong. Oh uh, no. Diddy of Carmiana, please. Um. Eight thirty AM. didn't save the Hercules, sorry, the Achilles stuff. Looks like you just drowned. How'd you guess? You know, Diddy, it's actually really hard to drown in this game. 
The game prevents you from accidentally running into the water, but somehow you did it. Didn't crash this time. Okay. Go back and buy some more Gatorade. Uh, I mean, non-descript, uh, non-copyrighted energy sports drink. I remember, I don't know if it's still happening, but I remember a time when, like, Gatorade was popular. Like, Powerade. Was supposed to be the one that was even better. It's like, even more electrolytes! But the advertisements were making it that Gatorade was not, like, as good as Powerade, because it was called Powerade. Kinda feel like there's been a lot of other sports drinks. I don't know if they're still happening, like there's still new ones, but like Propel is one. So Gatorade like started this whole thing. There's probably well, there's vitamin water, which is minimally vitamined. But um Propel is old and very different. Propel is older than dirt. Water with salt and sugar in it. I need... Water with sugar. There's one called Body Armor. When, when it's called Body Armor, you know it's good. It's nice that I have an Acme Badge Forger Model 3 right here in my Oasis home. And, yes, it's done. Here's your new badge. When you arrive at the entrance to the catacombs, just hold your badge up to the little black rectangle on the front of the doors. And the doors should open for you. The entrance to the catacombs is directly west of this oasis and is marked on your maps app. Thank you. So, this is it now. There's no more obstacles. I can just walk right into the catacombs, right? There's... Still something minor left to do, like maybe, for example, a small, easily removed rock could have rolled down the mountain and blocked the path to the catacombs, you know, hypothetically. Like, that's just something that could happen because this is an adventure game, I'm not so saying it did. Well, I'm just happy it's nothing major. Thanks, Amir. Oh, brother. Am I going to need even more of this? Johan Caulfield? Oh, I'm ruined. Ruined! What's wrong? Do you have to get to the other side? I have to move this boulder out of the path. Oh, I'm ruined. Ruined. Sorry, my name is Johan Caulfield, owner of Caulfield Earth Movers, and you are? My name's Lance. It's spelled Diddy. Here's my card. Can I ask why you're ruined? Oh, I'm so stupid. Uncle Stoop Nixie, is that you? I bid a million miles for the contract to remove this boulder from the pass. I was not expecting a boulder the size of a mountain. There's no way we'll be able to remove this boulder for less than six million miles. 
And now I'm ruined. Ruined. Tab, how are we going to get to the other side of this if he can't move the boulder? I don't know, Diddy, but we're going to have to think of something. Maybe you have an item that could help? Sir, maybe I can help. Huh? Well, I have these gauntlets of power. They let me pick up really heavy items. Maybe I could pick up that boulder for you? Gauntlets of power? No gauntlets of power are going to move this boulder. It's the size of a mountain. Well, at least let me try. Yeah. No problem. What do you want me to do with it? Oh my god, you just lifted the whole boulder out of the pass. It's a miracle. I'm saved. Saved. Oh, well, it was no big deal. This is so unbelievable and unexpected. Diddy, why don't you just take the whole the million mile fee? The whole the million mile fee. Uh, well, thanks, but that's a little too much money for me to carry around. But Diddy, you just single-handedly saved me against all hope. You, I appreciate your generosity, but come on, my money bag isn't big enough to hold a million miles. But no, really, I just can't carry that much money. Well, at least take whatever you can carry. Thank you. Now, what should I do with the boulder? Well, the contract didn't specify disposal, so I guess anywhere as long as it's not here. Diddy, maybe we should take it with us. A mountain-sized boulder could be useful to have on an adventure. Well, I don't know. I think it's a little bit too big to fit cleanly in my pocket. I don't know what to do then. I think I'll just chuck it somewhere. There, the pass is clear. Straight up. Okay, chat. I am tired. It is time. I'm sorry. My name is Tired. It's nice to meet you. But I'm going to save here. And next week, during the week, I'm going to try to finish this. So that's what we'll do. That way it's not like another two to three weeks before I play it again. Crash the game. <laughs> it really crashes the game. All right. Thank you for watching tonight, everybody. I am very tired. Uh, this game is utter horse shit, and yet I cannot stop playing it. It makes me laugh, and it's... You know what? There's, like, some level of critique that I enjoy with it. It's a, It's... You know, it's a piss take, but it's it's an enjoyable one. Dated, but that's part of the charm. So, I'm gonna go now. Goodbye. Ace Combat was a lot of fun. Maybe I'll play more of that. If I can figure out how to get the flight stick to work, maybe I'll check it out. And uh, I got a lot of good pre-recorded stuff, including a grab bag, and a mixtape, and some other games that are new that you may enjoy. Okay, goodbye, and thank you for the support, as always. Seriously, it means a lot. I appreciate it. Like, a whole lot. And I can't state that enough. So, goodbye, and also, oh, thank you, Mods, for helping me out. Good night. Hey, and XSplit didn't do the thing. It worked. The whole time. Interesting. Oh god. Oh, it's loud. I'm sorry, it's loud. Oh fuck, sorry, good morning.